My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Frank Miller's the, the Art of Sin City and why you should buy it, but with certain caveats. Before, <laughs> before we do that, a little bit of business. Yes. My latest book, October on in 1976, world's first blacklight comic printed with fluorescent ink. Looks like no other comic around. You can now get everywhere. Comic book stores, online, wherever comics are sold, you can find this. And uh, for those of you out there making comics, I made a process zine for this, 350 pages, part artist edition, part how-to, uh, behind the scenes of every step of the process that I went through to make this. And that's available on my website, jimrug.com. So uh, something for everybody. We're solidifying the publishing schedule for my next comics. It looks like it's going to be uh, early next year, springtime probably. Uh, Red Room is the title. And I have a Patreon going on. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. The, the strips go live every Tuesday. There's more than four dozen uh, sh strips, pages uh, live on uh, the Patreon as we speak. And they're at a high enough resolution that people have been sending me their bootleg... Prototypes. Uh, yes. <laughs> their bootleg comics. Today was a three-page... I mean, this week was a, was a three-page week, man. So good, good on the production end. The task at hand, man. Uh, the Art of Sin City, a money grab published by D by Dark Horse Comics uh, in whenever year they did it. And I recommend this book with the caveat that you get it for like $5 or less. I was going to say, this is one of the popular kind of books. Frank Miller, Sin City, coming off of movies and big success. A lot of print run on this. So you can track this down for undercover price. I picked this up at the fateful... Uh, Baltimore Comic Con, where we came up with cartoonist kayfabe for five dollars at a dealer booth, and I got it on the strength of maybe five pages, so it's like a dollar a page. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the pages that are are worth checking out, and I think are worth you know having in your repertoire in your library, is um, the these process pages that they show off, uh, sort of how Miller arrives at this place, the reductive place. I think these are probably on tracing paper and there's like a penciling stage. Then he goes in with a Sharpie and sort of figures out the bold shapes of the actual figure. And then the red Sharpie is drapery. It's amazing how much he's doing in the drawing part, you know, in the ink, in that final ink stage. Right, yeah. It's it's it, Because it's a process of addition and reduction i feel like that's something he's talked about like with will eisner and shop talk maybe um i definitely talked about it in different places about that drawing and in ink stage uh interesting what information he needs to get to the ink stage right see the animation squash and stretch <laughs> with that bit right there look at all the drawing that's done with the i guess that's chaps yeah, I wonder how much of that is even like white paint or something. Yeah, going back in on top of the black ink. Yeah, he was he was doing a lot of that at that point, man. Because this is the uh, that yellow bastard. When I went to uh, the Kubert School, he gave uh, Joe Kubert a double page spread of one of the early um, pages where Hardigan is in jail, and it sort of blew my mind because I was like, oh, like he used white, like a white paint. He didn't just, you know draw each of those shapes and color to color them in black it's nice when you get the comparison left page right page yeah between and, the, the and rough and the finish and unfortunately there's very few of those in here like dark horse hire hire me and jim to design your art of sin city <laughs> book because we will go through frank's stuff yeah put us in frank's uh, art art sanctum yeah <laughs> give us give us a couple weeks to go through his original art and we'll, we'll show we'll show you how to do it uh, because you're on the right track with this with this kind of stuff right here. That's fascinating how how much is obscured. You know how much he ends up taking away from that, like the underdrawing. I, I guess. I mean, it's so raw and, and loose. It's hard to call it that. But uh, really making some choices, seeing him figure out like extreme perspectives, but not really like abiding by yeah. dr draftsman architectural. No, it's concept of perspective much more than like tape down your your <laughs> vanishing point. And when you see his his studio, he's got all these like right. Franklin Mint cars and guns laying all around <laughs> and shit. Uh, but for my money, the uh, the art of Sin City is worth it. 
pretty much for, for these pieces. You know what's funny? If you look at a drawing like this and you look at roughs, um, at least my roughs, like say on my iPad on Procreate or something, a lot of similarities because the marks aren't as important as like the overall shape, form, perspective, you know, motion lines. Like there are a couple of things that you're going for, but it's not that final image. And so you get those sort of loose marks. Um, it's funny to see other artists in their roughs and see that commonality. It's almost like we move closer to each other in that rough stage where it's just loose lines. And again, we're not worried about the finish, the polish, the style. The, the finish like really separates you know, the champs from the chumps in a lot of ways. And, and it's something that, that I think about a lot. Like, would, would uh, you know, the product be better than the sum of its parts if one has an inker? You know, like, uh, can, can an inker really make you see your, your work in a different way? These are the questions that do come up in my mind. That's interesting. Uh, like, like work with an inker for a book to kind of see, you know. To see what they see. Right. And uh, see how you can incorporate some of that stuff into uh, your own practice. I do love this though. You do all the drawing, you, you work the figure out and then there's no line. It's just the space. It's just the negative space. Yeah, it's it's a clinic. It's a clinic. Unfortunately, there, there aren't that many uh, of those pages here. We looked at the bulk of them. So I can't recommend you get this for for uh, for cover price, whatever, you know, 20, 30 bucks they're trying to get you for. Um, but if you could find it at a steep discount, Get, Very get your hands on Kirby-esque it. hands. You see those fingers are just the, the rectangle shapes to create fingers and with the knuckles and the bends in the fingers. They, it, they might print the entire like last issue of um, Hell and Back that has like the the dream. Uh, oh, no, I guess not. What's the difference, though, between some of like like something like that and the printed comic? You know, it's almost exactly the same, right? Yeah, I don't I don't think it's blown up very much at all. This would make a lot more sense to me. There, there was the image that I had pointed out the square fingers, but unfortunately not next to each other. Right. So you don't get to kind of see how that's built. Yeah, it's it's some puzzling choices on, on layout, but that's such a classic issue. The Silent Night. Yes, sir. All splash pages. Very all silent few words. Yeah, man, that thing blew my mind. And there's Frank in, in that studio. You could see a little gun right there. You can see like his little shadow box back there with with his Cadillac Franklin Mint toys and junk. And look at man, all those flat files. Yep. Let us let us get in there. That's what we need access to. <laughs> <laughs> so is the art of uh, Sin City worth it? You be the judge. To me it was worth it for uh for those process pieces. I saw that the price tag was twenty five bucks. Um, I paid five for it and I could comfortably recommend you buying this instead of like, you know, your, your regular, you know, monthly comic off the rack. But that's about as far as I could go with that, man. Definitely worth it though for, to have those process pieces on deck. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new videos are available. Octobriana's in shops right now. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor to read the current Red Room comics. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter to keep up with everything we do. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts at the links below the video. I think we're going to need a second look at some of these process pieces, man, with the Sharpies. Maybe incorporate the Sharpie into, into my practice a little bit. Jimmy, give these guys their marching orders. Read more comics.